In this workshop, you will learn how to simulate transient pressures in a water distribution network triggered by an emergency pump shutdown and restart. Start by importing a steady state water gems file into Hammer and verify it. The WaterCat and WaterGems file formats are exactly the same as the Hammer file format. Notice that the main transmission line is the same pipeline that we were working on for workshops 1 and 2. Enter some missing information for the PRV valve 1. Mainly, we'll make sure that the operating rule is fixed and that the valve is inactive so that the status does not change during the transient. And also enter missing inlet elevation for reservoir 1 and reservoir 2. And now you're ready to run the initial conditions and verify that the steady state model is working. Change the flow units to cubic meters per hour to match the results in the workshop. Notice that the demands for the subdivision are 954 cubic meters per hour. We'll use the contours tool to create contour elevations. That way we can see where the high points in the network are and where the low points are. Low points in the system will be green and high points will be red. Use the contours browser so that you can see the elevation field in yellow as you hover over any point in the network. Pay particular attention to the node called J19 on the red area of your map. Use the wave speed calculator tool to calculate the wave speed for the pipes in the network. When you click OK, the calculated wave speed will be applied to all the pipes in the model. Use the flex tables to verify that all pipes have a wave speed associated with them. Notice that the same pipe diameters share the same wave speed. Next, we need to set the calculation options. We'll be running this transient simulation for 160 seconds. Also, we'll make sure that animation data is generated and also run the extended combination air valve results. And we'll be selecting a few points of interest for reporting detailed results. Those will be the high points J1 and J2 right downstream from the pump and also high point uh, J19 and low points J34 and J37. We can now compute both the initial conditions and run the transient analysis. We haven't entered any data yet for the transient event, so when we look at the results, we'll notice that the upsurge ratio is 1 for everything because there is no transient occurring yet. Go to Profiles and notice there's already a profile named Path1 that came from the source file. We will be creating two more paths uh, where we want to see the transient results. So towards that high point, J19, and one towards the low point, J37. The 
This is the path towards the low point, which we'll name path 2. This is the path towards the high points in the distribution network, which we'll name path 3. We're going to analyze this existing system without any search protection. So it's a good idea to create a new scenario, which we'll be calling existing system. Um, this scenario will use its own active topology. So we'll create an active topology alternative, then a new scenario, and associate this scenario to that active topology alternative. We're ready to enter the transient event. Our pump is a variable frequency drive. So how we're going to input our transient event is we'll use variable speed torque from the drop-down menu. And then we'll create a speed pattern to indicate when the pump is running at full speed and when it's turned off. At the beginning of the simulation, the pump will be running at full speed for five seconds. Then there will be a shutdown ramp time of five seconds, a pump delay between shutdown and restart of 15 seconds, and a restart ramp time of five seconds. Select the pattern we just created as an operating rule. Set the exact pump elevation and take a look at the pump curve under pump definition. This pump already includes the pump curve, but we'll input efficiency information and transient information. During a transient, Hammer will use the pump's four quadrant characteristic curves that we're inputting here in the transient tab to perform the pump calculations. Switch over to the existing system scenario and compute both the initial conditions and the transient analysis. The user notifications show that cavities are opening and closing, indicating vapor pocket formations. Take a look at the hydraulic grade flow and air vapor graph for the discharge side of the pump. The hydraulic grade line drops as the pump shuts down at five seconds. Flow drops to zero and then starts up again when the pump restarts at about 25 seconds, as we specified in the pump's speed pattern. In this profile, we can see that after the pump shuts down, the down surge generates vapor pockets at J1. When that vapor pocket collapses, large pressure waves are generated, and you can see that in this animation. Path 2 shows the same vapor pocket at J1, but no more vapor pockets are generated in the low area. Path 3 also shows the large vapor pocket at J1, but notice that the high point at J19 also has a vapor pocket that forms and collapses. Open the path one profile again to determine the time when the vapor pocket starts forming. 
there at about eight seconds. Notice the air vapor <clears throat> reported here at the P2 at J1 location. And you can see that it's about 13 seconds when it collapses again. So you can see that either here or in the data tab. When the vapor pocket collapses, it sends two waves, one towards the reservoir and another towards the check valve, which hits the check valve and bounces towards the reservoir, generating that step-like shape. It is at about 50 seconds that the hydraulic rate line starts to normalize, getting close to the initial conditions. We'll try another shutdown ramp time of much longer, 140 seconds, to avoid negative pressures. Compute the transient analysis again. And notice the effects. No vapor pocket forms and the pressures remain pretty steady, even after the pump restarts at 150 seconds. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.